Good evening. For my final 713 assignment, this is a defense of the research paper I wrote entitled 40 Barrels and 20 Kegs, the United States versus Coca-Cola in 1911 to 1916. The paper itself seeks to explore the connection between the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906 with the federal court case known as the United States versus 40 barrels and 20 kegs of Coca-Cola. I took a narrative approach by examining the charges brought against the company in 1911 and studied the evidence presented in court. The significance lies in the idea that if the federal government could charge and convict Coca-Cola for misleading the consumer about its ingredients, utilizing poisonous and detrimental activities additives such as caffeine in their product, as well as mislabeling their product, then the federal government could bring down the, any major company. The key primary sources included the 1906 Pure Food, Food and Drug Act, the testimony provided by expert witnesses both in chemistry, the medical field, as well as bureau agents who conducted inspections in Coca-Cola factories, as well as newspapers that published the excitement of the court of each court day. The research methodology included searching newspapers.com, the National Archives, as well as searching through the Library of Congress. Due to COVID, visiting research locations was actually out of the question, therefore all research was conducted online. I do want to add in here, I actually did reach out to the Coca-Cola company in hopes of gaining access or having their archivist be willing to send me copies of their actual documents from the 1911 case. However, they referred me to the Coca-Cola Collectors Club. Now, I'm not exactly sure why they would do that unless they just felt that maybe their collectors would know more about their history. Um, but as a historian, I actually wanted the archival documents and not what maybe a collector might have had or may not have had, which may not even be anything at all. So. I actually got no help from Coca-Cola on this, which is actually a, a pretty big downside because as a huge um, supporter of Coke, I was really enthusiastic to actually do this project and understand how this case impacted the company. So in, in summarizing my actual research, the court case against Coca-Cola does ultimately go in Coke's favor. The Supreme Court, or the future Supreme Court Justice Edward T. Sanford, who is the district um, judge overseeing the court case in 1911, does rule in their favor. And the reason why they, he does that is, he, first of all, he believes that the federal government is asking him to go beyond judicial oversight um, in deciding this case. He believes it's judicial overreach. He actually says that he does cannot actually determine the intention of Congress in as far as what they um, were planning to do as far as grandfathering or not grandfathering companies such as Coca-Cola who had already existed and their compounds before the uh, Pure Food and, Food and Drug Act of 1906 had been created. Secondly, he said that Coca-Cola was actually a distinct name, that it did not misrepresent the product. He felt that their name, you know, was a name that everybody knew the company by for 20 years. Therefore, he was saying, you know, how is this misrepresenting who they are? This is a distinct name that they actually go by. Fourthly, he found that they did not include a toxic or dangerous additive such as the caffeine in their product. Listening to the testimony, he um, understood that the caffeine was actually less than the amount found in coffee or tea, and that it was actually a derivative of the cocoa leaves. Therefore, it was his belief that, nope, we haven't violated this. And lastly, he did, he did rule that they had not misrepresented their product in their labeling. One of the things that the uh, defense had brought up are the federal government had brought was that they had said that on their labeling, it said they did not violate the, the Pure Food and, Food and Drug Act, and Sanford agreed with them. The Court of Appeals in 1914 actually upholds his decision, but in 1916, the Supreme Court actually overturns it and believes that they ruled in, in error is actually what they said. 
Coke ultimately lost that battle, but in 1918, they willingly settled with the company by reducing the amount of caffeine in their product even more, thereby allowing us to still enjoy the wonderful, delicious beverage that is Coca-Cola. Thank you. Have a great day.